In this video, I'll be updating my tutorial for glossy plastic material to include a new principled BSDF version. Just before I start, let me remind you that I'll be using Blender 4.2 with a Windows operating system, an NVIDIA graphics card, the Cycles render engine and a custom startup file, which I've got a separate video for. Now also, please remember to support this channel by going over to blenderbitesize.gumroad.com where you can get a whole bunch of materials that I've created in the past. OK, let's get started. So I am in the shading viewport or shading tab. I have the display render preview option enabled here so I can see the material as it's being built. I'm using Cycles Render Engine, as I mentioned, and my graphics processing card to sort that out. Now, if you want to know how I built this scene and any of the settings that I've got that speed up renders, then please do check out the rest of my videos. But let's make a start on this. So I said I had a couple of um, ways to do this for you. So I'll show you the original one first. This I created for Blender 3. Still works in Blender 4.2, though. So with our object selected, we start a new material. We'll get rid of the principal node and we will add in a diffuse BSDF. So I'll search for that even though it was top of my list. And this is where the base color is going to come from. So we are going to make that a nice bright red. And I'm going to set the zero at uh, the roughness to 0.001 just for a little bit of detail. And I'll plug that into the surface of the material output. So you can now see we've got a red material on that first monkey head. Now I need some glossiness to go in here. So Shift A and search for a glossy BSDF. Pop that underneath the diffuse. And you can either Shift, uh, shift A and search for a mix shader or you can control shift right click on one node and drag it to the other. Now I'm not sure if that's a node wrangler feature but if it is then make sure you've got that enabled in your preferences. Uh, anyway, now we're going to drop this roughness down to 0.1 and increase the color value all the way up to full value so that's from dark to light and you can see now we've got some reflectiveness going on here. But I only want a smidge of that to come through on top of the diffuse. So I'm going to reduce the factor here to 0 0.05. We've got some glossiness going on on top of our very slightly rough material now. But I want to add another glossy node. I'll increase the color value there again to full lightness. So that's full value, one. And I'll decrease the roughness down to zero. So that's totally reflective, not rough at all. And I need to mix this with that. So again, control shift, drag, uh, right click and drag. And that adds in a mix shader. Now I need to create a factor for this mix shader, so I'm going to search for a Fresnel value input, and this gives me an index of refraction. Now I'm led to believe by the internet that this value for glossy plastic is 1.460. So let's plug that in to the mix shader, and that works. Looks good to me. And that is the totality of the original shader. And that uses the glossy BSDF. So I'll name that here so you know. Now for the second way of doing this, I'll select the second monkey head, start a new material, and I will be working with the principled BSDF. Now just a reminder, I am using Blender 4.2, so this might look slightly different if you've been using Blender 3. Anyway, we're going to go with the same base color. So 
red, which is basically a value of 1 and saturation of 1. And then the metallic value we will leave at 0 because there's no metal involved, it's plastic. But the roughness we're going to take down to 0 0.001. The index of refraction, remember, was 1.460. Now it's starting to look very similar, but we are going to take a look at a couple of other values. Now specular, um, the index of refraction level here, if we crank it all the way up, it becomes super glossy, which kind of mimics very much our original one. Or if we crank it all the way down, there's no reflectivity at all. So I'm going to put that back at its original value of 0.5 as that gives me, in my opinion, a slightly more realistic looking glossiness. These are the values I will leave as they are. Now, what I want to do is also put a top coat of glossiness on. So we're going to go for coat here. I'm going to put the weight all the way up to 1. And you can see it's actually now made those highlights or glossiness even more than the original. So if I take that down, you can see it's kind of matching all the way up. And it's now even more reflective because what it's done is it's put a glossy coat on top of our original settings. Now the roughness I will leave as it is. And because it's a separate coat to the original material... I'm going to leave the index of, of refraction at 1.5. Now, for some people, this reflectiveness or this level of glossiness might be too much. You might still want the glossy, but you want to tone down those highlights. So one way of doing that is copying. So control V while you've got your cursor over that color and control V paste into the tint of the coat. And you can see that's brought it back down. So if I reset that, we've got very white highlights, but once I paste that color in, it's toned them back down to something very similar to our original um, material. Now there is a very slight speed difference between this original method and the principled shader. If you're doing lengthy animations, that might benefit you. And if that is the case, then use this method with the principled shader. You may even want to look at leaving off the coat because that will add computational elements to the scene. Um, but either looks great, and I'll render this out so you can see them both side by side. Now just bear in mind I am using the denoise node and some lens distortion in the compositor. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Now you can see that's actually very quick to render out, just five seconds to get both of those versions. But even where they're blending, you can see there is very little difference. But this principled version actually renders out just slightly faster than this version. Anyway, I hope that has helped you create some glossy plastic within your projects. If it has, or if you've just enjoyed the video, please remember to like, maybe even leave a comment or two, questions, comments, thoughts, always welcome. And of course, subscribe for notifications of future content. I will be working my way through my entire library of materials and updating them for Blender 4.2, so it's worth doing. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching.